Welcome. Today I'm here to show how customers can easily get started on their next generation FPGA designs using Xilinx's targeted design platforms. Today what I have with me is the Spartan 6 SP601 Evaluation Kit. And this kit provides our customers everything that they need to begin their next generation FPGA design. So if I open up this kit, I see that it has all the elements that I need. Uh, it starts off with a nice welcome letter that provides the details of what's in the kit. It provides uh, the setup guide. This is an important document in that it provides all the instructions needed to set up the board, hook up the cables, hook up the power, etc. I then have the user guide that provides all the details on running the reference software as well as uh, interfacing to the board. I then have a USB stick that contains the necessary reference designs and software, easy to load, use, available to load onto the host system. And then finally I have the board itself and this is the SP601. This features a Spartan 6 LX16 device and we'll be using this for our demonstrations today. Underneath this is all the cables, all the power supplies, everything I need to do to begin the design. So now let's go ahead and get started by setting us up and running the software. So let's take a look here. I have uh, the SP601 board. I have the cables set up as per described in the setup guide. I have my cables for connectivity for configuration as well as UART control as well as my gigabit ethernet cable which will allow connectivity to the board and I've got my power supply. I'm now ready to begin turning on power and I can move to the next step of this demonstration. Let's go ahead and launch the base reference design interface. Now this interface allows me to do several things. First of all it has the ability to select an image source and if I scroll down here I can see that I have access to various controls and various effects and in this case I can select different filtering types uh, for the images that I've selected. And then finally if I move down here to the status section I can see that I can connect to the FPGA which I am connected. I have access to the image size as well as certain processing data. So if we move to the top here now what I'd like to do to begin with is select an image from within my PC. So if I bring up the interface here I can select an image. I'll select this one here and the image will come up when I click this show display. The image is now up and I can go down to the control section and I could display one of several different filtering effects and in this case I'll select edge detect. When I click that the image will show both pre-processed as well as post-processed. Now that I've got the software installed on my machine, I've got the board hooked up, I've got power on, we're ready to take a look at what's happening inside this reference design. So we have a gigabit ethernet interface. This is where we're communicating. This is the communication with the host PC. With that interface, we're then communicating to the built-in memory controller in the Spartan 6 LX16 device. This is talking to external DDR2 memory. This is where we're storing the data for the image. We're then taking that image out of memory and we're passing it through some processing. And in this case, we're doing some simple DSP processing. One implementation using DSP slices, the other implementation using logic resources. And we're now going to look at the effects of that processing in our interface. So if we go back to our interface here, we'll take a look at, in this case, I brought up the edge detection here. And I can adjust the gain and I'll bring the gain up here to say 2.7 and you can see as the image on the screen um, I've now applied a uh, edge detection algorithm and the difference from the left to the right. Um, this implementation is implemented using DSP slices and if I were to see the same implementation using logic I can click the button here in the control panel called logic. You'll notice that the connection to the FPGA was lost and then restored. And now if we look at the post-processed image, I can see it's quite a bit different than the image processing done by the DSP slices. Now this is for several reasons. Number one, the logic implementation of digital signal processing is much less uh, precise than the DSP image processing. It's also being done in about a fifth the uh, 
frequency or the performance that has been done when we do it in a DSP slice implementation. So if we go back to the DSP implementation, you can see the connection was lost, then restored as we configured the FPGA. And I'm back again to an imp implementation that is very crisp, very high performance, showing the difference in the way a customer would implement a design using hardened features or using programmable logic. Now that we've completed step two, we've assessed the different alternatives in terms of implementation. We looked at an implementation that uses logic to implement the filtering. We've also looked at an implementation that uses the hard DSP slices. And we've seen the benefits uh, that are gained by using DSP over logic, the hardened features in the FPGA. This is important as customers will evaluate how best to implement their designs. Finally, we're going to move to step three, the last step where we take this reference design that we've provided and we extend it in the way a customer would do by adding something to it. So we'll modify it by looking at the source code and then relook at our design in the end. So let's go ahead and launch ISC. I want to then take, I want to now take a look at my design and uh, see what's actually happening here from within the design environment. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at the resources that are going to be consumed. I can look at the uh, logic, the DSP, the block RAM, etc. This design uses approximately 34% of the available resources in an LX16 device. But more important than that, I have access to the source code itself. And so here I brought up the source code. This is Verilog source code. I can see by example how we implemented the various functions, uh, the gigabit ethernet interface, the DDR2 memory interface, as well as the DSP processing using slices and logic. Now what a customer would do is they would go into this uh, source code and they would modify it in a way that would be appropriate for them. And in this case we've added a section here uh, for push button interface. This section has already been added. We would then, because we have access to the source, recompile and then reconfigure the FPGA with this new additional capability added. Now let's take a look at what this would do to the reference design itself. So now we've modified our design in a way that a customer would do. We've added control using the available push buttons on the SB601 board. And now if we push any one of these buttons, we can see that we can control the image filtering as we can see in the background. So in conclusion, we just completed the three steps that a customer would use to get started with the SP601 evaluation kit. In step one, we hooked up the cables, we added power, and we were very quickly able to get the interface and begin communicating with the board. In step two, we investigated different alternatives in implementation. We looked at a logic design that used the logic elements to do the processing. We looked at the implementation using DSP slices. And we looked at the trade-offs in doing both. Finally, in step three, we were able to take the same reference design. We were able to modify it in a way that a customer would do. We added push button control, and we were able to add an interface to the existing reference design. Thank you very much for taking the time today to watch this video.